Hey, how's it going guys? This is Papa Joe for this week's edition of the Metal Shop Vlogs. I had to slow it down this time because I noticed that last week I was like rah, rah, rah. So uh, today we have some, you know what, today is a special episode of the Metal Shop Vlogs because it's our third year anniversary. We've been uh, hosting and featuring local bands, out of tour bands, and as a matter of fact we've even had an international band feature on our vlog for three years now, man, so we're pretty proud of that. Um, like I, we always say, don't, people ask us like, why do you do this, man? Like. We don't even charge or anything and the whole reason we do it is because we like to support but we're doing it while we can man you gotta you gotta like pursue your passion you know and we love music so this is our thing and we love uh, supporting local bands so with that being said our guests today are our good friends in nowhere man hello, hello. hello everybody hello uh, hi local Paso band. you guys could give us a quick intro uh my name is mike i'm the sometimes lead vocalist <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is uh, Hector Morales. I'm the lead guitar player, rhythm guitar player, maiden lover, songwriter, Jack Drinker. Hi, my name is Jacob Rodriguez, and I'm just a poor boy who plays <laughs> along with these cool dudes. <laughs> Avi Velos, I'm the bass player in Nowhere Man. Uh, Frank, uh, drummer. Cool. Just a drummer. Just a drummer. Just a drummer. Just a drummer. Bam, bam, bam. Hi, he beats Frank. the shit out of the drums, man. <laughs> Just a rhythm <laughs> section in the back. Okay, so <laughs> if, uh, talk to us about the, the origins of Nowhere Man. Uh, well, it's long time coming. Long time coming. Um, we came from a... Well, me and, I say we, me and H came from a cover band a couple years ago. Um, we had always been wanting to do originals. Just uh, we have a lot of stuff written. Just never found the right guys to do it with. You know, just to put it together with. Yeah, or to commit to it. You know. So a while back, I stopped gigging. I stopped playing for it was like three, four years. Um, we would still wrote occasionally. Uh, we still had stuff, and then uh, Hector cooked me up with. Uh, I think it was Javi and Frank at first, and then we started off as a four piece felt great uh at the time i backed out again <laughs> came back again and this time we finally found a you know a good core to start off with a good a nice little solid you know, balance to, to do it with and we started off as a four piece i think we did one gig as a four piece one gig as a four piece and then um we slowed down for a little bit life you know takes yeah, yeah, over life gets sometimes and then we just started restarted again and uh our hope was always to have two guitars um you know it's just a matter of finding someone who's willing to not only play alongside him but uh, i guess gel together right yes yeah, and so that's a tricky jacob part. you know we uh, they had yeah, let jacob. me know about jacob yeah, i think it has a lot to do with like the whole maiden thing right yeah it's, you guys it's, have like that same obviously. it's everything about maiden the ambiance <laughs> well i mean that's how i hooked up with mike was Oosh, 2006? Uh, was it right. Desert Southwest Forum? Yeah, the Opaco yeah, Times then, Forum. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, I mean, reading a lot of his posts on the on the internet, I thought, oh, this guy's kind of a, a wanker. You know, because he was very uh, straightforward in what he used to say, especially about bands, you know? And so, uh, but he does not made it. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd never, like, I'd never been in bands before. Like, I'd done other stuff, and, but. Uh, a total rock band I've never been in and I, I remember I posted uh, if I'm going to be in a band I'm going to be in a Maiden tribute band uh, so I posted weeks went by no response <laughs> they, then H finally responded uh, hey you know we're into Maiden or he's into Maiden we started off talking and chatting a little bit but he was with another band at the time and you know they were doing really well they just won the battle of the band and whatnot and oh, yeah. got second place yeah. and i think you know they had issues with their singer at the time uh, we talked it came about you know hey how about a cover band mm, okay well let's try that and uh you know I, I music's always been a big part you know whether it be rock or metal or you know spanish or whatnot it's always been a big part of me so Ah, why not? You know, and so we yeah we got together with that band, and uh, I think me and him stuck it out for close to eight years. years. Yeah, yeah years. it's been a while. And like I said, I left 
you know, but luckily we found, you know, a good core now <clears throat> to where it's like, it's pretty solid right now. We're pretty comfortable with each other. Um, yeah. And I think it's important to note that, uh, like, you, both of the guys in the band are also in other, like, cover bands. Right. Uh, and that's actually how we met. Like, we met Javi through um, Sin City. Well, Sin City Boys, that's how you guys started that off. That was the first. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, we met Frank through XLD as well as Jacob. And Hector's in the field. Um, yeah, you know, doing that kind of stuff is, you know, as far as the field, I've been doing it for going on four years. And I had to get back to rocking out. I mean, uh, got to put my fingers back to the test. You know, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, getting back and doing Maiden. Yeah, that was a chore. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, as far as, like, with the taking guitar thing, um, uh, I've always wanted to find somebody that was able to, to play with, number one. And, I mean, you know, Jake was a perfect fit. And he's also been really cool with learning the original songs, which, you know, I have to say with Frank and Javi, the exact same thing. Um, pretty much have them all recorded give them the CDs or MP3s whatnot, and they go to work. That's and awesome. so it's been that simple. Um, trying to find guys that are like that was, was a chore. That's a trick, yeah. It was a chore. Yeah. And um, I would be, you know, we, we were stepping out, getting ready to play and having so much fun. Um, can't wait to do more recording, but actually with these guys. Yeah, with and, these guys, yeah. You know, That'd be a whole new experience, cool. Yeah. Uh, so what about like your personal music history like do you guys are you guys like self-taught or have you had any training or, or like you like band or orchestra kids i barely learned last year <laughs> to be honest with you well done yeah you're, you're a quick learner <laughs> yeah wow. i've seen pictures of javi like with long hair in the 80s man so he's... what yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's what God, i would love to those. see <laughs> in due time you know, <laughs> it's got to be part time. of that throwback thursday thing you know right you know, yeah. facebook uh, exactly. so you guys are all self-taught no, I, I started off with my father. I played with him in XLD. His music's been a big part of my life since I was a kid. And when I was a kid, I was into the drums, but I was always shy. Oh, yeah. uh, anyway, so then... um. Speak up, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so I got into high school and they were like, well, we offer guitar. And I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and try it out. I immediately fell in love with it. Um, my, t my teacher saw I have potential in it, telling me, oh, I want you in advance and all that. So I picked up the guitar, obviously I was listening to Maiden and Dio Megadeth and all that cool stuff. So when I was in college, I took a break because I was so overwhelmed with everything that was going on that my dad, he's like, hey, I want you to play in our band. And I am very grateful of that because it got me back into the music. But not only did it get me back into it, it gave me experience in made me meet new people so that's why i am here today i got to meet them and just expanding my horizons in my music yeah. hobby yeah and funny story i got to see jacob play with one of his bands when they were freshmen in high school yeah yeah because my son played that same talent show with his band so i got to see like jacob shred to uh what what did you guys play a main cover it was wasted years wasted years oh. yeah yeah it was wasted so. years I saw him before you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, anybody else? Anybody want to talk about their like their music That's history? True. Well, I grew up when MTV just started. You know, everybody remember that when MTV played music mm -hmm. videos, mm -hmm. <laughs> hair bands. I don't remember. I'm not that <laughs> <Anybody? old. laughs> But uh, even having a brother that was a drummer, ten years older than me, uh, I still gotta say I was self-taught because he's made sure that or told me that I was not to go near his drum set. But what he didn't see, you know, didn't hurt him back then. <laughs> True. Yeah, I remember so, the first video <laughs> that NTV played. Oh yeah, didn't like the very video. first video, it was called uh, Video Killer Radio Star. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. The fun, we didn't fun have fact, we had to watch MTV with the little lines going through it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Just like on That's TV, the, the dirty on TV. <laughs> the, so like, which, uh, I know you guys are big main fans, but which, like, uh, which famous musician do you admire? And maybe try to like emulate in a way. Bruce Dickinson. Dude. Oh. Yeah, I know it's still made in, but that's all right. Jesus we did that with uh, somebody did this Facebook thing about your favorite guitar players, your top ten. And I've always thought of myself as a as a child born of Dave Murray and Adrian Smith. 
with some Angus Young thrown in there. You know, when I first heard Naden, I was just like floored. It was Phantom of the Opera. And that was it. I was just like, holy smokes. Like, I don't know how to play Same this here. stuff. Yeah. And then, I get it. you know, that thing that we get to get where Eagle's there, it's like, oh. Solid, man. Revelations, you know dude. Oh. Yeah. When I first saw that Maiden cover for Killers, I was actually scared of it. So I didn't <laughs> want to touch that record. Like, yeah. oh. <laughs> so are you an Adrian guy or a Dave guy? Oh, I'm a Dave fan. Me too, man. I always prefer. I don't know. I like Adrian because like his vocals well, and his blues. He plays more blues, bluesy. Yeah, that's style. what I love about Adrian. Um, I'm a big fan of the blues. So when it comes to my influences, uh, I always liked blues music. But Dave Murray is the one that made me want to look for my tone in the sense of like looking for the right guitar that feels good for me, finding the, the right amps and whatnot. And another person that when I started playing guitar I tried to emulate was Dave Mustaine. Um, I don't agree with a lot of things that he says nowadays, but <laughs> I still I think he is awesome and he influenced me in a positive way in terms of music. So that's one thing that... It's always Dave or Dave Mustaine. Dave Berry and Dave Mustaine. There you go. He likes Dave. He likes Dave. <laughs> what about Dave. you guys? What about the low end? The low end. The, the low, low end. end. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, obviously, an Iron Maiden big, huge fan, uh, Steve Harris, but also Geezer Butler as well. They have the same style of, uh, I guess, uh, performance and how they play and put the, the songs together. And in fact, one of the first times I played with Hector, we're at my house, and he says, it's weird. You slap that bass just like he's a butler. The thing is, is I, I've always tried to fall in line with the Steve Harris, but he picked up on that. And I, the more I looked at those videos and heard the music, yeah, they have a similarity, but I play kind of rough and tough. And I, I do have to change my strings a lot of times, you know, because I do play it hard. Nice. And uh, that guy has, has that same style. What about you, Frank? Uh, admirers back in the 80s like i mentioned uh unfortunately i have to say it was tommy lee you guys remember that guy throwing his hands everywhere mm -hmm. and, uh you know drumming he was tight and stuff but yeah that was tommy lee the guy from tesla troy lucetta he's just got his combinations that i enjoy um to the nowadays is the guy from the food fighters he's pretty sick drummer and oh yeah that's pretty much Try to stay fresh <clears throat> as much as I can. You know, you know how they uh, <clears throat> people talk about like guilty pleasures, like yeah. something they really like but you don't want anybody to know about. Like, who's a guilty pleasure for you guys? Yeah. Uh, but musician-wise, because uh, like I knew like in the '80s, I loved Duran Duran and I was a big Miller, ah. but I fucking loved Duran Duran and I didn't care wow, if people didn't like it. For me, oh, it's there. probably Candlebox. Nah, yeah. Nah. Candlebox. Nah. Nah, dude. There's no things that good, though. Like you yeah. said, Duran Duran, I say, it I, 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 I
No, I'm I like the gin blossoms too back then. Gin blossoms. Oh, tonic. Tonic. We saw tonic. Uh, speaking rock. Tonic. I loved it. They're Tracy like, Chapman. They're like a chick. <laughs> but I thought the I question was more like, can you really admit to liking? Yeah, it. yeah. yeah that, that was a question. I'm sorry. We can. Yeah, can you talk out. music? I mean, we could care to. I think for me, it would probably be Prince. You know, I mean, oh, he's a guitar, he's a guitar player. He's a shredder, man. And the, the songs that he writes, you know, I mean, I'm not like a full fledged Prince fan, but I can sit there and admire his playing. Yeah, same you know, here, because man. it's simple, but his stage antics are just I, amazing. I think there's like a certain level of, of uh, respect that people have for him because he was like, I mean, well, he's a guitar he, guy, man. He, he fell yeah. out of that, like, that pop culture right, in the yeah. 80s because he wasn't, at first, when him and like Michael Jackson came out, they were considered both. You know, kind of the same genre, yeah. Prince kind of separated himself because he was an actual. I don't know Michael Jackson was a musician, but Prince was actually you know playing guitar and playing these mad riffs and, and drums. Solo. And yeah, so I think Dude. he separated himself at that time, and he just became something else. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're talented enough to record a song live and then release it as a single, like a deal right? with Purple Rain. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I haven't heard of anybody else who's done that. I was also born a lot of uh, the 70s funk, you know. I remember as a kid listening to my stepfather's uh, real to real stuff like James Brown, uh, Sister Sledge, Donna Summers, mm -hmm. even disco, you know, stuff like that. And I think now, you know, when I, I kind of transfer a lot to that, so, yeah, yeah. you know, my playing, you know, a lot of guys, you can, you'd be surprised how many guitar players have problems yeah. with the funk, yeah. you know. Like I don't me. know if it's. Uh, <laughs> uh, the white man can't jump thing, you know, but you know, <laughs> it just it all comes from here. Yeah. You know? yeah. You're a product of what you listen to. <clears throat> yeah. I also think too. I agree. Chicken? Uh, I'm pretty open with the music that I listen to, but if I'm gonna have to go with a guilty pleasure, it's this band. I was explaining it earlier to someone it's called Wagaki. And I like watching Japanese cartoons. And what, the cool thing about them is they take traditional Japanese instruments and a lot of the folk scales and stuff like that. And they uh, mesh it with a lot of metal and hard rock. So I mean, I have no under, I have no understanding of what they're saying. It's all Japanese, but I love it. it sounds awesome. And another band coming, me as a huge metalhead. It's an indie band called We Were Promised Jetpacks. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's like, here's how it went down. It was like Maiden first, and then it was UFO. Love wow. UFO, right? And then it was to Megadeth, and I got into the whole thrash scene. After that, it was We're Promised Jetpacks. And they were constantly one of the bands I would listen to on the daily. Um, but of course, I like all the old stuff, like the Ink Spots is a cool thing I like listening to. Robert Johnson's super cool. Um, I like Billy Joe a lot. Ooh. I love his vocals. <laughs> I just don't like the way, he, have you guys watched the Hired Guns? No. Watch it, man. It'll, I don't like the way he treated his uh, session musicians. Ooh. I heard Billy Joe. Oh, he treated them like shit. Yeah, gotta respect your your yeah your crew yeah. Watch it, watch it. Hard guns on Net Netflix, I think. Netflix. Netflix. Watch it. Mm. YouTube, yeah. yeah, I still gotta see it. What about you guys, man? Personally, my guilty pleasure back in the day, Edith Raquel. Mm. I love the music that and the musicianship in the background, mm -hmm. but I also play a lot of acoustic guitar. So for me, Simon and Garfunkel, um, Robert Johnson. Uh, things like that. Hootie and the Blowfish was also big for us. Uh, Sin and I, in fact, mm -hmm. used to listen to that a lot. Uh, those are my guilty pleasures. Uh, but again, you go back to the Maiden, the Scorpions, the Black Sabbath, and UFO, and that's that's what I'm made up of. So. Hmm, guilty pleasure. I might have too many. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Come on, Frank. Come on. Uh, it's okay, bro. It's only going. Let, let it up, bro. Let this, it up. this is only you going on the just growing up with, say, with the metal, loving the metal and stuff, it was going to be something that's love good music, but totally opposite of metal because you needed something different from your metal. Uh, maybe in excess, it fits in there from the guilty pleasure. You're good. Dan, right? Dan, 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 Dan. Okay, no, um, we go. Everybody, now. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I thought that's you were going like, to say never, never tears either. apart. That's like one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. yeah. Being a metal lover. Somebody yeah. should cover that. Like, Being a metal lover. I love Michael Jackson. We'll work on it. Every song I hear of him. That'd be awesome. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> oh, yeah. it was and it's gone. <laughs> but yeah. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of them because like growing up in the 80s, it was yeah. it was like really confusing, man, because we wanted to go to concerts and metal shows, but there were bands like Dex Dexy's Midnight Runners, like Cindy Lauper. Like, 
Ugh. Dude, like she sings to my soul, man. So yeah, I mean, it's good to like be diverse. But back in the eighties, yes, I think diverse thing. if it wasn't a band that had killer guitars, I despised them. But then all of a sudden, I saw the girls like these bands like Duran Duran, and, and I'm like, oh, cool, I could try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think like, but I think like you say, you, you go from metal to like you know Cyndi Lauper, or, and a lot of that is like what what I kind of do is because that just creates you know influences and. They, and even creativity to a point creativity. when you're writing or, 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 or you're just solely listening to I mean I, I've listened to some absurd shit and you know my, my, my girlfriend knows that we after gigs you know the last thing sometimes I want to hear is metal or rock you know I just want to mellow out to mm-hmm. some Jose Jose or whatever and <laughs> just throw her off completely but I mean my stuff heart. like that like you just never know that it could create a bug. It could create an idea. You know, yeah, it, well, it does a, work that way. Because, inspiration. Uh, yeah, I mean, you just don't know where that next song is going to come from. You know, being how you're feeling, whether you're down and out, or if you're up high, or you just don't know. You know, those songs and all those artists really create a big difference in you. Mm-hmm. It's it's one of the songs we wrote uh, years ago, back in back in Remedy, that I was trying to bring in, but like I said, those guys were like really hip on original stuff. Was uh actually influenced by a Kelly Clarkson song that I heard, uh, Never Again. And the drum beat, there was some drum beat in there that I was just like, holy shit, that's really cool. So I, I used to program my drums on this machine and sure enough, that was what birthed that song. It was something totally opposite of what metal was or right. rock or something like that. Cool, so let's go ahead and talk about your original music. Like how many original songs do you have? As far as nowhere, man. Right now we're at four, five, 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 five. Uh, four is good. Five, one's getting there. In progress. In progress, and uh, probably about two more in the burn. In nice. The um, is any of that recorded? Uh, yeah, we got. Well, all of them are recorded. Um, the four that I'm working on trying to get a CD done. Um, try to get the, well, actually it's five, because one's like kind of the same way. Uh, it's instrumental. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> I get you on that one. Yeah, I'm trying to get it get it done. Uh, all this I'm doing in my house. So, I mean, I'm not an engineer. All I know is I try and make everything sound as good as possible. Um, you hear bass, you can hear guitars, you can hear vocals, drums. I'm happy. I mean, I know there's, there's a bigger process to it, but. <clears throat> As long as we get the idea. The, the way it works was we, or it's been working anyway. Uh, he writes an idea. He shoots it to me. If, if if he doesn't write lyrics or music to it, then he needs lyrics or some melodies to it. He'll shoot it to me. I'll work on it. Uh, but it's all, you know, to begin with, he plays bass, uh, real simple, guitar, uh, drum machine. Just get the idea down. Sends it to me. If I get to it, right away great if not you know he'll work with it uh once that's completed then we get it to the guys just to get that idea down um and they're pretty much open i mean we're not really that much of, a, of an ass to say you know, that's, that's not the part you know, bullshit we don't do that do it over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bullshit. You know they, 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 also, they have the freedom to kind of like <laughs> fucking liars <laughs> Fuck you, Mike. <laughs> Fuck you. So we were nowhere, man. Be like, Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I mean, in all honesty, they were they're open to interpret what they feel and what they play. And sometimes it stays the same, and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, um, one of the songs Indigo uh, has been with us for I mean, since the beginning. That's one of the first songs I've ever written lyrically wise, and and it's taken so many changes in those eight years you know mm-hmm. until now where it's just like on oh, time and it's just you know now. i like it dude and we saw the last time we saw you guys play at uh, b17 right it's like mm-hmm. really catchy man it's like very familiar it's got a like very catchy before. chorus to it mm-hmm. um, it's mm-hmm. a very in your face kind of song you know the hook hooks um, are very yeah. important you know yeah. regardless of what you know you're writing rock metal you know anything you just got to have a, some sort of a hook that i kind of learned from my brother my little brother jesse then you know you gotta have some sort of hook so you know people are singing along with you indigo you know mm-hmm. and uh, i don't know what the hell that song's about 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next question. Hilarious, hilarious, you know, like, but it has a hook. Something about camels and golden cobras and stuff. It, it's all about a movie. Not about the movie, but I got the idea from a movie, uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, I do love that movie. It, it's such a great movie. And a lot of the ideas <clears throat> came through not the actual uh, scene that was happening, but like the flashes back and, oh, or the, you know, the, the memory scenes. Stuff. Yeah. A lot of that kind of triggered a lot. So, yeah, you have singing cobras and, and the sky is green and the field is blue, you know, kind of opposites. And, yeah, just shit like that, just to get people thinking, like, what the fuck is that about? Oh, yeah, you're just on you know, So school. next time they hear, like, <laughs> oh, I got that line, but what's this line about now, you know? And that's the way you kind of want to hook people is just throw it out there and let them feed off the lyrics, let them feed off the idea. Yeah, yeah, let, let them, in, like, make their own interpretation. Right, and everybody's going to interpret it differently, you know? I can interpret, you know, Wasted Years a different you know, way that he can interpret it. Yeah. And that's the beautiful part about music is that you can be in a certain place in life, you can listen to one song, and it'll just mean something totally different than it'll mean to you. you know? Yeah. And that's what we kind of like, at least that's the way I kind of want to write and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and kind of grab people by that. Cool. Okay, so this is going to be the mic segment of the vlog because I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, the last time we saw you guys, you, you played a song about like uh, divorced fathers right 6, and, 6 p.m and i was like okay well i gotta go to the restroom because i'm probably gonna cry when he plays this song because <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean I, i've been there you know and it's like it's a very like emotional subject it is for me um i guess you have to be in our shoes to understand right because like we're supposed to be men and strong about it but still man i mean nobody will understand the feeling of dropping off your kids at 6 p.m but you're still human yeah yeah, yeah. so could you talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, <laughs> well, it, it's it, it is a song about you know divorced fathers, and we don't normally get all the benefits of our children. You know, that's a whole different story. But the uh, the song was pretty much just written about the feeling, um, you know, just dropping them off and uh, having them, just watching them walk away bag in hand and I mean is that that's not what you had really planned for them yeah. that's not mm -hmm. how it was all gonna supposed to work out so. but it, at the same tone I didn't want to make it to where it was a sob you know sad song yeah. it's a I mean he came up with such a beautiful uh, melody and such just beautiful tone and it just carries really well you know and, and it was perfect because I think I just sang it to you uh, he had the he together. had the melody and everything, and that's why I kind of like give him a lot of credit for the tune because um, being able to write with a singer, you know, as he's portraying his message, you know, I, this is how I'm singing it, this is how I want to do it, and I'm just following his lead. Yeah, which to me is is yeah, I, awesome. I, I don't play instruments, so I probably know an E. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, so what was the but, title of that song? Uh, Six p.m. And I think that and was just, one of the first ones when we uh, started recording again. That was the first right. one we did. Yeah. And um, I was messing around with uh, uh, Easy Drummer, and I found these cool 6-4. I like those one two three one two three type things. And, mm -hmm. and he had that song, and he sang it to me, and I'm like, jump and there you yeah. go. In the end, I mean, it was it, it's about that, but it's not all bad. It's not all sad. I mean, the time you spent with them... And yeah. The duration is is the best, and 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 it makes you feel alive. Yeah, but that's true. I it's just that. that one, two, three minutes that just kind of takes your heart and kind of crumbles it away for a little bit. <coughs> true. Yeah. yeah, I get that. Uh, so, who do you feel supports your music the most? These guys. The I mean, Um I think. Oh, I showed Javi some of the songs, and you know, he was totally blown away by it. You know, and I mean. I could probably ask him how he felt about it. It was really cool when you have somebody that's that supportive of the music. That's I have a problem, Joe. I have addictive tendencies. If I like something, <laughs> I attach myself to it and I, I love it. I just love it. it. Yes, until either I'm done with it or until it goes to the next level. And when Hector shared the music that he and Mike had written together or alone or what have you, 
every song got better. And my first question to Hector was, why the fuck isn't this out there right now? <laughs> Number one. Yeah, why? Why are you? Right. Okay. Why are you and hugging then, up? So much? <clears throat> the, the second thing was, how can I help out? And to be honest with you, he and I, once in a while, we'll have some beers or drinks or whatever. We'll ask each other, why are you jamming with me? Well, why are you jamming with me? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is you have to believe there has to be buy-in and there has to be mutual respect in order for us to get it done. And to be quite honest with you, these guys right here, they get it. And I want to be a part of that. They have to literally kick my ass out of the band because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not going nowhere, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nowhere, man. I get it. Hey, I get it. <laughs> yeah, the music is that good, though. It needs they to be out it. there. They didn't get it at first. <laughs> okay. yeah, so. So that's all the, 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 the basis of it. When you find guys that are into what you... I mean, one of the days, I mean, I, I told, even told Jacob, I'm like, you got ideas. I want to hear them, you know? Mm -hmm. This isn't just uh, uh, the Mike and, and Hector thing. I would love to hear his ideas. I'd love to hear, you know, Javi's ideas or Frank's ideas, you know. And eventually that's the goal I would like to yeah, that's achieve. The that's the next know? step we'd like to take. I mean, we do, I mean, whatever we do now is we've been, you know, we've had stuff. But I would eventually like to get everybody together and just jam out and just feel it out and just write, you know, together collaboratively. Yeah, I guess. And, and write that way. And, and, I mean... So do you guys have plans like to record this and record it and put it out like as an EP or a full full length album or? I would like to. I mean, I know though as far as the fundage thing, it's kind of hard, and you know that takes a lot of work. I mean, uh, to get everybody on the same page to be able to go in the studio and and just etch it out. You know, I mean, it's e it's easy when one guy is doing it, but you know to get everybody on the same page. I mean, we, we did that years ago and we had won a, a Battle of the Bands. Oh, sh we went into the studio as Remedy and, you know, four pieces and it was actually kind of hard to get two or three songs in 20 hours, yeah. you know? And and I would really, if that, something like that was to go down, I would really like to have an outside person come in and really do the producing as far as, hey, you know, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. And, and so forth because I think that's what a band needs. Yeah. I mean, unless a direction. A direction to I'll get the by. best out of the player. So that I mean when you lay it down it's gonna just sound you know Yeah well I'm out I'm out. Well we kind of show already. Well the line dude it'd be it's cool. I mean you guys keep talking about how you guys have a, a solid lineup, we have good chemistry, so I'm sure that's gonna carry into the studio. Oh so, yeah. We look forward to it man. I look forward to you guys recording something and putting it out so that we can listen to it, you know? Mm -hmm. We can share it and... I mean, we have all the stuff up there. I mean, they're, they're like the stuff that we did and... And um, oh, I'm going to put in everybody's little touch eventually. And then right. we'll come down and record the stuff so that it's... At least got that so we know that it's all of us together. But the songs are up there on our... On our, on our Norman Facebook and our... Uh, the Reverb Nation. Mm -hmm. So you can check them out, listen to them. That's how they'll be done live. Um, you know, Frank's done a good job at taking care of the drums. You know, one of the songs he really kills me on is uh, how he did uh, one of our songs, which is We Don't Know. And you know, he, he was actually the one I remember when we were rehearsing it. No, y'all doing it wrong. Make sure you do that one part you put in there, you know. <laughs> and he did a solid, solid job on that song, you know. Yeah. I did my homework that week. <laughs> <laughs>
Cool, so now it's time for the show-off segment. Show uh, we, we call it the show-off segment because Judy and I fucking love going to shows. It's our thing. Uh, show-off. I don't know why we had kind of, kind of like a slow year this year, man. We've been to like 80 shows, but <laughs> we'll, we'll pick it up here, man. <laughs> uh, our shows in my it's weird because like, for some reason, last year we didn't go to a single show in November. So we're gonna ch- we're gonna change that this year. Oh, yeah. So no. we're gonna go ahead and, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the shows that No Man has played. Like where have you guys played? Well, actually, we played at uh, Handlebars already, and the previously owned, I believe, it was called CJ's. We played there before as well. The good shows and the great shows that we've had have been at Mulligans Three, at B17s, From which we'll be playing there again on the 20th. And we'll be back at Mulligan's uh, number three on November 3rd. So, so far, that's what we have. And we have a couple of shows coming up at uh, Iron Horse. Iron yeah. Horse as well. In the Northeast. Northeast? Yeah. Northeast. Yes. Yeah, Northeast. Yes. I've never been to have any, but it'll be. Yeah, uh, that's cool. It's a cool place. Me neither. Yeah, you guys. Huh? You <laughs> haven't played there with XOE? We used to play it back in the day. And, well, back in the day. <laughs> Five years ago? Five years ago. <laughs> it was. I think Friday nights, it turned out to be like the. Diamond in the hay, bro. Oh, hell yeah. You guys haven't played Rock House yet? Not yet. Not yet. Something yeah, always yeah. comes up. Uh, scheduling, conflict and scheduling, is, uh, schedules, as well as uh, personal schedules. Yes. So, yeah, it yeah. happens. Uh, where would you like to play? Rock House is one of those uh, venues <laughs> you'd like to play at, to be quite honest nice with segue. you. Gotta be Rock. there. Rock and House. I'll show you, yeah, because it has uh, the space, nice stage, lighting, etc. Sound. And yeah, the fog uh, machine. And the sound, correct. And the fog machine, yeah. That's bad for your throat. <laughs> I it's like bad for my photography, dude, because like, once I see right? the fog coming out, I it's just dry. take a break. I like it. <laughs> that might make me look pretty, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make Frank look like cuter, mysterious. mysterious. I want to play festival. Uh, That's what I was going to say. I like get out of town, maybe like an out of town venue. Or... Well, even in town. I mean, we've gotten so much shit over the years because huh? we used to be... Well, we're still our primary looking at cover me, bro. Band, <laughs> we always got dogged make because we weren't part yeah. of the in crowd and stuff, but... I just want to play festival. You know? I'd like to hit a speaking rock. We'll speaking rock for, would be a goal uh, as well. For the yeah. tribute guys to come in on Saturdays, you know, go yeah. there, do an hour of our music. Mm-hmm. You know, a few maidens in there, you know. Uh, I'd like to do that, you know. Yeah, I think that your, like, your originals, they mesh very well with the covers that you do. Um, I didn't, like, feel like I wasn't bored when you guys played your originals. I, I liked them a lot, man. I think they stood out to me more than the covers. Because, like, cover... Cover nice. songs are cool, but then when you play your originals, you get to see like the true personality of the the band and the musicians, you know. So I don't know. That's just me. Maybe I'm. We love Even you, with Joe. Covers, you know, I get you, Joe. Your... <laughs> <laughs> I get you. With covers, you still got to put your own flavor. Yeah. And I know, you know, me personally, I've gotten a lot of flack over the years. You know, as the guitar player, that will play a certain riff and then but won't do the solo exactly like the the record. I'm like, well, you know what? I think like we could do in Jimmy Page, you know, if you do the air, 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 people are cool. I don't think Jimmy Page ever has ever played his his say no. But no, ever. Yeah. no, yeah. I mean, to me, and that's where it would be nice about it. Be nice. We get you know, it's a lot of separation between original and cover bands. I understand both sides. I've been now I'm a good part of both, but I mean, cover music. There's nothing wrong with it, and there's nothing wrong with the way we, you know you interpret it yourself. If it's something very technical like a rush or a maiden, then yes, I understand keeping time, yeah. keeping mm-hmm. the notes. But it's some, if it's something like you can kind of tinker and play along with like ACDC, yeah, real soulful, or, or, or even we used to do the Toadies, the uh, pop, oh, yeah, pop Pearl Jam, and we used to just go off, or these guys used to go off on solos and. You gave me a break to go and take some shots, you know, check out the band, <laughs> make sure they were doing their job, you know. But it just gives you that open. You don't have to be just because you're a cover band doesn't mean you have to be a tribute band. Yeah, true. yeah. You know, I expect that out of a tribute band, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and, band, and there is a difference. Like cover band, there, there is, there is, and and cover bands to me, like our stuff, a lot of the stuff we do, the songs we choose and pick. Uh, you know, they mean something to me anyway. You know, I want to portray it somehow because I know, you know, she might feel it, he might feel it. You know, you just never know what a song means to somebody. You know, and the way our originals we do is the same way. You know, you act them out, 
and you go out there and you just hammer them out because you never know, like the 6 p.m. might affect somebody. Yeah, you know, you, know? you, never, you, you never know who you're out. gonna touch. Exactly. Hey, can you sing Zebra? Zebra? Yeah. What's Zebra? The band Zebra. The oh, band Zebra? Oh, no. I, so. I bet you could, man. You have the, I think you have the range. Because like I keep asking cover bands can if they could cover one, and they all, they all tell me, oh, yeah, we do one of their songs, but I've never heard them play it. What? Mm, they're lying. Dude, voice. fucking Zebra was awesome in the 80s, man. I Jacob don't, I don't quite them. remember them. Huh? You can sing it. I will check them out. Yeah, check them out. Man, Zebra. I got to see them like with the Arlie Speed Wagon <laughs> and Survivor, like in 85? Five ish. Cool. So, like, what are some of your. I know you were talking about, like, the. Kind of like some of the different aspects of the music scene, like, as far as, like, the cover band scene and all that. So, but what are some of the good things that you see in the, the local music scene? And, like, how, how is it different now? From when you were in it back at, like five years ago, what do you think? Well, I think it's great, um, especially because well, I started with XLD. You know, I'm 22, and um, You're 22. Yeah, Jesus I'm Christ. fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, I started oh, off with my dad, happened. obviously, yeah. and you know, people always come and talk to me. They've always been really cool. But then you have people like, of course, like yourself, Joe. And you're trying to bring the music scene together and I, I can see that that you're doing that so i find it such a remarkable thing because not only is it music itself that brings people together but it's also the community because there's like um try not to bash but when i had my buddy he well, a couple of friends they were in a band called northbound yeah i remember them. and they played hardcore shows and there's times where, like i was there i felt involved with them but then there was also times where there was people who were like diehard fans of the of the scene which is great it's amazing but at the same time i felt like oh, i'm not that because i did go to support the music but it wasn't music that i had on my playlist it wasn't music that i wanted to go and listen to it just You're supporting your friends yeah support my friends and enjoying the the live music at the time it, there's a big difference when you listen to music in your own car and when you listen to live music it's like how a lot of people they don't really listen to the blues but they can enjoy themselves at a bar playing uh listening to a band playing the blues you know it gives a good atmosphere and that's what i had enjoyed but at the same time it wasn't something that i felt really comfortable around you know because i was different i liked maiden i love all this older stuff so when i see you doing like this vlog and all that i feel like it's amazing and it brings us together because not only do you just focus on one type of genre, but you focus on just bringing people who are trying to get out there and share their ideas. Um, and you're just spreading the word. And I just find that awesome. Cheers yeah. to Judy and I, Joe. I couldn't do it without Judy, Cheers. man. Cheers. Cheers. Judy's, got yeah. that. Judy's got that magic magic touch. Cheers. 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 So, Cheers. You know, like, in, in shorter words, I think it's awesome. I, I think Jacob hit something that in general i mean the scene has always been as far as i've been and i've only been in it maybe 12 years you know i, I started late and, but to me the scene has always been divided you've always had your covers you know band bars or bands and you've always had your original mm -hmm. and they've never kind of come together and and i understand to a point to where why they can't but venues as far as venues venues need to really step it up and just promote live music you know dedicate yeah. themselves to the live music you know you can dedicate certain nights to originals you can dedicate certain nights to covers or djs or whatnot just dedicate yourself to that and and, and everybody should and hopefully would come together you mm -hmm. know I, I mean we've been out uh, and i'm guilty of it i, I don't really go out i've, I've been in Inclusion for way too long, but I mean now, you know we're we're, we're out and about and we're, we're trying to go see this, you know, or who and that, and but I still see kind of see like oh no they only have covers or they only have and like, and it's still the same like I mean it's up to the venue to really not put it all on the bands you know to do all the work and all the promoting and all that that's just I've never un really understood that yeah. Because in the end, it's the venue that really, you know, makes most of it. Mm. And the bands are the ones lugging the equipment and all this and getting, getting very little in the end. But I'm just saying, you know, 
it needs to become not a cover, not an original. It needs to become just one live music scene. Yeah, live music, period, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's crazy because like when Judy and I first started the Mill Shop Vlogs, we always said that we were going to focus on original bands because most of the original bands that we knew back then were, were like younger kids, like kids like our, our, our kids' age. And we felt that we could help them the most because they're young. They really don't have jobs like high school. Some of them are still in high school or, or finishing. So we we thought that like our efforts could help them more than more than the older the older bands, you know. Right. Hey. We kind of like we kind of like <laughs> we kind of like stayed away from cover bands because we always thought, well, you know what, cover bands get paid. Uh, kids don't, and they could use our help. That was the bottom line. Right. Yeah. But it was crazy, man, because when we met Javi and Sin at their show at Rock House the first time, it kind of opened our eyes big time to the fact that there are so many talented musicians in El Paso and. It, it kind of felt like shit thinking that we were putting an age limit on that, you know. Some of the, the, the guys that are our age and older can fucking shred, man. Like, it's like the talent is ridiculous. And so they, they open our eyes big time to the cover band scene. So now we go and support cover bands versus we hadn't done that since the, like we were, I was like, I was like 20, 21. When I go to the Chelsea Street Pub and Putney's and stuff. Oh. <laughs> so now I mean it just expanded our horizons and now, now we, we support cover bands because hey man they're musicians too and, and it, we love, it, we love it, musicians it, it, it's all in the same you know, you're, in the, you're in the same group man. And, and, yeah. but I can understand why you do it for original acts because one thing with me is it's one thing to write your own music and have the nuts to go out and play it um, I mean I'll never have any beef against any original Cool, man. So let's talk about your social media. Where can people find Nowhere Man on the internet? Well, currently we have a Facebook account under Nowhere Man. And we are working on an Instagram account currently. Now, we want to make sure we have enough product um, as far as photos go, videos, etc. Um, of which you and Judy have been just... Photos? Awesome. Phenomenally. Yeah. Awesome. Phenomenal. On, on helping us out on that. Not only us, but I mean, everybody in El Paso. Um, but on Facebook, uh, you'll see a lot more being posted, uh, especially after this vlog. We want to make sure that people understand who we are, what we're about, what we like, what we don't like, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, we, we te we, we're trying to get out there right now to make certain that the original music takes the forefront in what we're doing. We will sprinkle in the uh, cover music as well. But right now, uh, we have a formula that I think is working. We're, we're going to go away from that a little, uh, eventually, but we like to get some other bands to open up for us and try to get them exposure as well, some of which have been around already. Um, our next show at the B-17s on October the 20th is going to feature Hyperglow uh, alongside Nowhere Man. So the folks that show up to that show uh, are going to get a culmination of original music with a little bit of cover music from us as well. It should be well-rounded. It should be an awesome show at a great venue. So uh, when it comes to uh, social media, any help that you guys can do with uh, liking our page, uh, checking in when you show up to our shows, uh, posting your videos and pictures from the show really goes a long way. People think it's just a, a selfie of themselves, but it's not. It's actually promoting the venue the local music, the band, the members, and themselves. So it goes a long way so we can all make this uh, an experience for everybody. Yeah, I think Hyperglow is like one of the only other bands that does both covers and originals, right? That is correct. Yeah. They're badass. Yeah, yeah they, they, are, they, they are. Those are dudes right? fucking shred, man. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> if you guys are watching Hyperglow, yeah. let me do some Edoist and Silencio with you guys. That would be good. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll buy you guys a shot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, out of... Uh, so like you, you have Facebook, that's the most reliable way to get a hold of you? That is correct. Uh, Facebook and obviously, um, uh, I believe Mike is the only one that doesn't have uh, Facebook right now, but that's fine. You can communicate to Mike uh, through our Nowhere Man Facebook account or through one of us. Uh, we all have individual <laughs> accounts and uh, Chase, you have we'll, relay, we'll relay the message to Mike so he can understand this. <laughs> 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 Drinks too much. <laughs> so like if somebody does want to book you for a show, like how long is your set? Like what are the, what's the minimum, the maximum? Right now we have three sets um, that, that wow. we can put out there. So you could play like a whole a full night? Yeah, and the reason we're, we're adding another band is not only for that, but it's also the double exposure. It packs the house and the formula has been working. If you've been to one of our shows or, or, or to one of the shows that we're playing alongside another band, 
you know it's a party and you get a just a mix of music and uh, different age groups and different likes and dislikes and it becomes a party people ask me how do you do it well, i like to throw a party yeah. we like to party <laughs> yeah i don't know if you guys out there know but javi can rally the troops man uh if javi like knows uh, okay he goes to a show people know he's going uh, people show up it's crazy man javi's badass yeah he's got Dude, like, he can promote man i mean good to you brother yeah uh, thank I you mean, appreciate a big, it it's like a big old i mean big hand to javi because when I first, you know, when we first met, you know, we jammed and it felt great and everything. He's a great musician. But we started, like, now this round, we started booking shows. And, you know, I, I see the, the the messages that we, in our group text. And that guy is just, like, always, always, always on it, you know, always promoting this, promoting this, you know. And it, it's not on the day of. It's before, you know. It's ideas. It's things that he thinks of. And, I mean, he's just, like... Yeah. I remember a couple of weeks back, he um, shared one of my pictures of Jacob, uh, just to like introduce the fact that he's part of Nowhere Man. Uh, he's a younger guy. He's like the young gun, and everybody's like, "Yeah, Jacob, fuck yeah, go for it, do this." And then next thing you know, there's a bunch of cookers. Oh my god! Handsome. I'm so I quote somebody said, "Yummy." Yeah. What the fuck? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Yes. So. Mm. That was all because of Javi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Javi. <laughs> now, now I know I won't go home lonely. <laughs> okay, so like, uh, this is like prob probably my favorite question of our vlogs. It's um, what advice would you give to a young musician? Tone. Guitar players, tone. Honestly, mm. yes. But I'm talking about a young musician. Somebody who's like thinking about maybe starting to play or maybe not. Yeah, tone. For, <laughs> for me, honestly, is well, I'm, I go to school. And I work, but um, as a young musician, you kind of get told that music is this thing that's, it's either music or some other, some other thing, right? And if you look at the guitarist of Queen, who has a PhD in astrophysics, and is also, you know, the guitarist of Queen, that inspired me, saying in a sense that I can go and sit out and do a career that is books and all that. But at the same time, that shouldn't stop you from pursuing your own hobbies and also including your hobbies as your life. Because if you're really passionate about something, it's not just one or the other. Like for me, I'm passionate about engineering. And I'm also passionate about skating and music. And Yummy. if I <laughs> if I find the time, <laughs> and I right? are we all thinking the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> and if I can um, just manage everything right. I can include it all in my life, not having to decide one or the other. And that's just my advice. It's just, I, I've seen other YouTube uh, people that I follow, they're all musicians. They're like, oh, if you're gonna do like music, um, you have to be dedicated to it. Of course, yeah, like, that's one thing. But at the same time, that shouldn't just discourage you from considering putting um, your own thoughts and feelings and your own ideas out there even though you're involved in something else. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of work, too. I mean, if I was telling a young guitar player, eat, drink, shit, music. You know, when I was learning at 13 years old, I think that's all I cared about. You know, when I was 15 years old, I wasn't chasing girls. I was learning Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, you know. Same. Went into the Army, uh, was, out with, was without my guitar for a good six months, and I was, like... You know, having withdrawals. You know, love your instrument. Love your. You, know, you want to play guitar? Play it. Don't be scared. You know, play it and play it the way you want to play it. Don't worry about what other people say. You know, do what you want to do. My little boy, uh, Jacob's right now learning. You know, and you know he's so excited about it. Yeah, I have a son named Jacob. <laughs> and um, you know, he's just like like dad. He, you know, his his goal is to be better than me. I said, you got a long way to go, but you, know, <laughs> you got this. Yeah, you got this as long as you practice it and and you focus on your music, you know. Write. Don't be afraid to do it, you know. Just play, you know. Cool. Just Frank, play. What about for like young drummers, aspiring drummers? Because like drummers have to put in a lot of hard work, man. Just like setting up their drum set. Just to they have to arrive stuff. early. Playing like five different bands. And then bands. Like, the band finishes <laughs> and they all go celebrate and the drummer's over there like taking his drum. Tearing down. True. So talk to us about that. 
I would tell them, treat your body nice. <laughs> like he was stretching. Older, like he was stretching. Being before. older, uh, it just goes. It goes with the territory of being drummer. And I've been told I've played maybe too forcefully sometimes, but I'm trying to learn how to control that. And, but uh, advice for a young drummer. I'll just be true to your music. Uh, be passionate, like Hector was saying. You know what you like. Uh, don't worry about what anyone else says. And do what you like, mm -hmm. pretty much. That's it. And, and how do you guys like balance your obligations, like your work and... All that part of your lives with music. I get in trouble a lot. <laughs> I've, been, I've been getting in trouble for the past yeah. since 2003. I've been getting in trouble. You get the look. Uh, you get yeah, you know, you know, I love my family. You know, they're, they're my, uh -oh. they're my rock. And but you know, there's sometimes where, sometimes I might put the music before, and it gets me in a lot of trouble. I burnt the spaghetti today. I usually don't burn. Didn't mean bad pump, but I burned the spaghetti today because I was so excited <laughs> about being here today. Um, it's hard. You gotta just find that special person if you have a special person to support. I got support mine. Get yours. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do chores too. <laughs> chores. Most likely, I'm gonna have to do chores for the next couple of days. It, 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 it is a hard balance because you have not only that special person, but you also have kids and you know, you know parents and it, I've really fucked up a lot. You know, I have a really bad memory as it is. That's why I use a book with lyrics and stuff. But you think you think you fucked up? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. No, maybe not. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> there's a there's a lyric in his, one of his songs that that really touched me a lot. In uh, one of the songs that we're gonna do tonight, called Reflections, and I see my life through words you've heard. Right. Um, when you you get involved in the music scene, you get involved in the music scene, and it's it takes you to a lot of different places. I can I can see how the guys who do it for reals, the pros, can really fuck up their lives um you know lucky for us i guess in a way we have our day jobs that we have to become grounded uh you know i might play guitar with no more man but guess what i'm a postal worker you know that's my other life that right. pretty much takes up a lot more time than, than the music so it's a hard balance yeah it, it brings you down to earth and um but those words though that I love that lyric. Aw, he listens to my words. Aw, deep as, thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> as for me, these are deep thoughts with Hector. <laughs> as All for right. me, I'm a piece of shit. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't fucking sleep all night, and I'll be probably pissy off. My roommates haven't said anything yet, but I'll be like learning something like the night before, and then. Um, right before practice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll probably have some homework or something doing that in the morning or something like that. I just, that's what I mean. If you find your, if you manage your time right, like, a lot of things are possible. Fortunately, I don't do that, but I still make it happen. Um, that's because it's something that I want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, definitely no sleep <laughs> <laughs> is one of the things I do. <laughs> right okay for me the advice i would give to a young kid is actually be selfish when you have your instrument alone in your room and be a part of something when you're in a band in a room with your bandmates um show up prepared
Cool, so now it's time for the rapid fire. It's like our favorite segment because we get to learn a lot more about the band. I'm gonna ask them five random questions. It's not off the top of my head because I'm kind of buzzy, so I'm gonna recycle some of the questions I've asked before. Oh. So you guys have like 1.256 seconds to answer. You guys can answer like one at a time or yeah. as a group. There's some decimals. Okay. As well. Yes. Right. So here we go. Okay, what was your worst fail on stage? Falling on the floor my first gig in 1991 at Sasso's. Nice. I was the fucking guitar awesome. player that everybody was wondering about. First song, pop, fell on my ass, but got back up. Cool. Okay, next. For me, it was my first gig with Nowhere Man at CJ's. My bass guitar unplugged from my amp. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I remember that. Yeah. I think I have a picture of you like re replugging. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> thanks, Joe. <laughs> okay, Frank? Oh, man. You know, drummers go off beat sometimes, but this is not even considered off beat. This was way off beat on one of Nowhere Man's song, Ghost of Kane. It Ooh. is tricky. We didn't notice. Cool. You better know. <laughs> I noticed. Jacob. And these guys noticed when they looked at me. <laughs> laughing at some older women doing like stripping. And I was laughing on Damn. stage. <laughs> so that was probably my fuck up. <laughs> It wasn't really a, mine wasn't really a fuck up. It was a, one night I decided, uh, I mean, my girlfriend got stoned and before we headed to a gig. And that first song took forever. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't really a fuck up, but it was just like a whole fucking set within that one song. Okay. So where was your favorite place to go to a bonfire when you were in high school? La Union Cornfield. Oh, Did you cut a deal? McKellican Canyon. The wood. The house. Canutes. 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 We used to go Canutes. make some room out there in the, where the, in the cornfields are right now after football games and whatnot and just make a big old hole and pallets would be just it's fucking blazing. The nice. sheriffs would come and join us. McKellican Canyon. Just keep it safe. McKellican Canyon. McKellican Canyon. Red Sands. Hey. The Chaparral Sands. before I went to the army. Burning tires and my friend Joe jumping Burn, over the fire. Tires. <laughs> burning tires. Burning tires. Killing the environment, dude. No wonder. <laughs> right? What is now Saragossa Ridge Beam area? That's where I used to go do bonfires. Oh, damn. East El Paso. He's still doing it. Burning yeah. tires. <laughs> it was Burn Red tires. Sands and it was accidentally dropping bullets in the oh, fire with oh my, my brother. <laughs> what? Damn, bro. For me, it was Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill? Which is now like where Peter Piper is behind Tinseltown. Free Dirt, which is where Tinseltown and Lowe's and all that good stuff is. Yeah. Crater Hill. Um, Southside, over by the Water Freeway. Damn. And Pendale. Before they built all those houses on Pendale, like, yeah. they had the streets, but no houses, and it was fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. The circle. <laughs> the day, bro. Okay. Oh, yeah, the arsonist in the El Paso 80s, came the, from Isleta. <laughs> you kids have no idea, man. The 80s yeah, was you the fucking best. The mm -hmm. 80s was so fucking fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you've heard. Yeah. Okay. Is it in the movies? Okay. Next question. Best Netflix binge-worthy series. Oh, Jericho. Uh, when the world supposedly ends, nuclear wa warfare and. Spoiler alert. Yeah, these guys. Good show, Jericho. Next, Jericho. I was a big fan of How I Met Your Mother. Cool. Hmm? Mike. Oh man, uh, let's get to Frank. Let me think about it. Right? The guy with the glasses, the drugger. What Heisenberg. Was uh, what Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Say my name. Even, I think it was a whole weekend. <laughs> and I changed You're my goddamn right. right. Okay, next. Oh, yeah. Sons of Anarchy. Next. I don't really have one, man. I mean, shit. I mean, I'm going to say Spartacus. I can tell you guys aren't watching TV. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> Does it have to be a Netflix show? Oh, no, it could like be Hulu or, I mean, yeah, crazy Walking Dead fan that, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, it's next, yeah. next I, I, we kind of lost it, man. We were big uh, Walking Dead fans, but after yeah. uh, Glenn got whacked with Lucille, oh man, I was out, man. Oh, that was cool. So yeah. For me, like, like Judy and I, we like to okay, Breaking Bad. Like going back a couple years, we also like um, what was it called? We're gonna have to break the fourth wall here. Ozark. Ozark, and the one about the pregnant chicks that the dudes don't get the wife's pregnant. No, the. Handmaid's Tale. Oh, that one is a good it's one. Fucking awesome! You guys should check that one out, man. Yeah. It's great. But no, there's, like there, there's a movie you should watch on Netflix Donnie's that Darko. I recommend. Is a, a movie called Beast of No Nation. And it's mm. about the child soldiers in Nigeria and all that. Play um, very very good movie. Damn. Very okay. Good next. Movie. <laughs> okay. Starbucks necessary or whack? 
Circle K. That's where I get my coffee. Dude, I agree. I agree. Oh, I agree. Fucking K. Circle K. <laughs> so you see fucking whack. badass coffee. Yeah. Whack. Dude, Circle K has everything. Like the cream, yeah. Yeah. the like energy it. shots. Texas pecan coffee. I'm like, what is this? I got this? Six, that's great. Circle feeling, bro. <laughs> If I can start, start my day with some Jack Daniels or tequila, I'd be fine. So Put it in with your Circle is, K coffee. Coffee is overrated. Okay, so, necessary or whack? Whack. I don't drink coffee. Yeah, coffee whack. Coffee, coffee at my house. I make the best coffee, guys. Hell yeah, I believe We're all going to Hobby's. For Hobby's house for tomorrow morning. morning. All right. Let's go. Okay. And the last question. Dog or cat lovers? Dog. 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 Dogs. Dog. Dogs. Hey, Fuck yeah. Dog. 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 I have four dogs. I have a cat. Dog pound, we got oh, the dog pound back here. <laughs> I have four dogs and I love them all. Well, and we had to get rid of one of uh, your dad's dogs though, because he kept on trying to hump our dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. Your dog was like, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Aside from the dogs that my dad he learned has, it from I have somewhere. Oh, dog. oh, that's oh. where he gets it from. It's like nowhere. Yeah. That's a learned behavior, man. <laughs> nowhere, man. That's a nowhere. Dogs aren't born with that skill. That's a nowhere. They learned it from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, now's your chance to give any shout outs you'd like to give to anybody? Who maybe helps your band do what they do? Personally, uh, Joe Nunez and Mama Judy Aguilar. Without you guys, uh, there'll be very, little, very, very little exposure. Uh, the about the, you the local venues. Um, we do have friends and families within the band They're and right the local <laughs> band industries in, the, in here in El Paso locally uh, that, that right support here, each studio. other. <laughs> We also have fans, true fans, Sandra that get invited to, to special events and get part of, be, to be part of the, the band scene and so they can understand what we go through and, and what it takes in order to get out there. Um, Two, five, but you guys, Mama Judy, Papa Joe, hats off if I had one to you guys. That's what you Thank you. Three years. Anybody else? Like yeah, big time years. thanks to, um, Thank you. I mean, Javi said it all. I, I really do. Our uh, we really do appreciate you guys inviting us to it's our pleasure, man. your uh, vlog station. I don't know if they know it's your the, the middle shop. Yeah, the middle shop. But um, uh, yeah, thank you very much, man. I mean, we um, this is the first time our originals have gotten out there, and we appreciate the opportunity to be able to just you know talk about them and yeah, shoot cool. shit amongst each other and yeah. support the scene. You know, that's, all, that's what it's all about. Thanks. Well. Like I said, when it comes to the band, I think Javi does a great job promoting the band. Um, I put my words out for you guys in this whole vlog and how I feel like it's wonderful what you guys do. Thanks, man. Personally, I'd like to shout out my dad for getting me back into the music. I had a Fender Strat just sitting there. Felipe. And I was, to be honest, I was just depressed. I didn't want to do shit. So he's like, just come play with us, and, you know, you'll make extra money. And now it's not even about money or anything. It's just about pursuing something that, or just having time to do something that I enjoy. Um, and now all of Nowhere Man for including me, even though I'm 22 years old, super fucking old, like we way it, ahead of their time. <laughs> <laughs> you know. get it. But thank oh, you. you know. Cool. I would just like to thank my family, you know, my wife, uh, my kids, all the people that's put up with my shit the past, since 2003 playing. Um, my, I'm going to get a little sentimental here, but my musical soulmate right here, this guy here, you know, <laughs> being able to write music with somebody is, to me, a special thing. And, you know, one of my, you know, I'm just glad that I've gotten to be able to play with Mike again. Uh, Javi, uh, another guy I've met that also uh, really puts his heart into a lot of things. Uh, Frank, same thing. You know, he's a drummer that you know gets the job done. You know, hey, champions. <laughs> Thank you, know, you buddy. Champion with this guy too. Uh, Jacob, phenomenal young guitar player, and this guy is going somewhere. And, and last to you guys, you know, Papa Joe, Mama Judy. I mean. You guys do a lot for the music scene, I think. You do the pictures you guys take and all that stuff. Thank you, man. And congrats on three years. Yeah. Yes. I'm really yeah, glad. Yeah. You know, I hope you guys keep on doing this because the local Great music job. scene really needs this. Thank you, man. Yeah, we love doing it. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I can't describe it, man. It's just like become a big part of our lives now. We enjoy it. I mean, we've made so many really good friends because of it. So, oh yeah, man. We love it, man. We hope we can keep doing this for another... Fucking 10, 15 years. Back, 50. Uh, and also, like, I did want to give my shout outs too. 
If everybody's everybody's done? Yes. Yes. Uh, as always, I want to give a big shout out to our awesome sponsors at Alive Audio. Um, they, they came through, through for us big time this year, man, and, and we appreciate them so much. Uh, Alex and Nicole Vargas at Alive Audio. Also wanted to give a big shout out to Mama Judy because she, you guys, like she, okay, she presses record and everything, but she's back there working hard, man, making sure everything's in line. She gives these signals and stuff. She, she like winks at me a lot. Which keeps you motivated. Uh, oh, yeah, man. Big shout out to Mama Judy. Yeah, dude. Oh, I, I see that. We got these. We got our secret moves. Um, <laughs> also, also like if you guys are on a, on a business or whatever, you'd like to be a part of the Metal Shop Vlogs, sponsor us, man. Like, hook us up. Uh, we'll go ahead and like rep you guys on our vlogs, and we'll get you some exposure. I know people talk shit about like, oh yeah, well, I'll get you exposure, but it does go a long way, man. Um, and also wanted to give a shout out to our, we have a, an audience today, man. Thank you, Miss Linda and Cindy. We have Bobby Beegs back there and Gilbert Thank from Innocent guys. Exile. And we have Sapphire, Mike yes. Stady. And big shout out to like all the friends who come out to the shows, man. Like especially, like, we, have, we have a really cool circle of friends with Javi and Sin, like um, Harvey and Priscilla and Yuli and D and so many great Cool. And... Having said that, we want to end this vlog with a special little birthday celebration. So here we go. How would you bring out the cake? Nice. Uh, and we're going to get our audience, like a studio audience in with us. Yummy. So we can give a quick birthday shout out to the Metal Shop Vlogs. Remember, the Metal Shop Vlogs is not about us. It's about the bands. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday, dear Metal Shop Vlogs. Happy birthday to you. you. Here's your time Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week on the Metal Shop Vlogs. Later. Peace. Cheers. Peace.